Thank you so much for streaming our latest message from First Baptist Church. Here at FBC, our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We do that by thinking big, thinking small, thinking in, and thinking out. We hope that this message helps you as you continue to grow in your faith. If you would like to stay connected to FBC, you can visit our website at fbcloyd.ca, look us up on Facebook and Instagram, or download our free mobile app. Now here's the latest from FBC. Enjoy. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Hope that you're all already off to a great start this weekend. Uh, it's fitting, that I want to say thank you uh, to a number of you that have been bringing in treats to the office for us as staff. And, and uh, um, you know, there's been baking, which has been really good. It comes with its share of challenges for me. Um, fitting in the suit, being one of them. And so, but, but that's, been, that's been great. And, and the cards, uh, which are my favorites, just as we get an opportunity to hear from you and, and how God's working in your life and, and uh, how FBC is an is, uh, uh, important part of your world. And so I just appreciate that. So thank you so very, very much. Everything has been really appreciated. Everything except one thing. There's one thing that I didn't appreciate so much. I came in one morning and there was a, a package on my, on my doorknob. It was a bag and it was addressed to Fran, and I did a bad thing, I didn't open it, um, which I should have, but anyways, and the point is, is that you need to know this, you need to know this, that at least to me, uh, in, from my perspective, Fran has somewhat of a skewed idea of how our relationship should work, and particularly my role in it, okay, so you need to understand that right from the beginning. And, and then what you need to understand is that this did not help. And I'll, let me show you what I mean. Do you see that? <laughs> There's a shirt in this bag. It says, Doug is my homeboy. <laughs> and the problem with it, too, is that it was anonymous. So I'm not sure exactly who I'm speaking to this morning, but you've got to cut that out. Because <laughs> frankly, it is not helping. She doesn't need this kind of encouragement. <laughs> Anyways, but it's Thanksgiving, and so I am working on being thanks, thankful. I am I'm giving thanks. And, and I want you to know that I am taking this very seriously. I am even working on being thankful about Ryan, who callously and patently, patently, falsely accuses me of sitting in my office week to week listening to Adele. That's categorically false, and I want you to know that. But I'm working on being thankful about Ryan. I'm thankful, for example, that he's not a twin. <laughs> yes, amen to that. All right. Let's pray, and then, like, uh, like we've been talking about, let's, we'll dive into some thoughts on thankfulness. Pray with me. Father, this morning, we stop and we say thank you, God, for who you are. Lord, I thank you for this church family, best church family in the world. Thank you that I get to be a part of that. Thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us here now this morning together. I pray that you would come and that you would speak to us. I thank you for this opportunity to learn from you. Speak into our lives, God, today. Help us to understand you better. Help us to become the people that you call us to be, the people that you've set out for us to be in the world, in the community, in the culture in which we live today. So I pray that you would work to those ends. And I pray these things again in your son's name for his sake alone. Amen. Okay, well, let me just ask a question. Is it just me? Or are you finding that Thanksgiving is becoming more and more of an anomaly? That when we come to this weekend, this Thanksgiving long weekend, that it just seems sort of 
out of touch, incongruent with the rest of life as we know it. That somehow, more and more, we get to this weekend and we stop what we normally do and remind ourselves to be thankful and try to think of why. It seems to me that's the case. And, and I think that that's the case because more and more I'm finding that we are less and less inclined to be grateful. As people, we tend to complain more and give thanks less, despite all the obvious advantages that we enjoy in this part of the world in which we live, with all of the numerous, many, many blessings that are ours day in and day out. And it's ironic, really, I think, that despite living in the lap of luxury in so many ways, we as a people are becoming less thankful and more and more ungrateful. And it's becoming more and more our habit to look around at life and complain rather than give thanks. I think it's actually really becoming the social norm. I think that complaining has actually even surpassed or supplanted the weather as our go-to topic of conversation. It's how we lead in conversations in life so often now. Because it's easy. We dive in and start to complain about things and everybody identifies and jumps in on that same bandwagon. And away we go. We start conversations with phrases like, can you believe what's going on down there now? Did you hear what they expect us to do about that? Can you believe that this is where we find ourselves today? And I think if we could take a look at ourselves, if we could just take a step back, remove ourselves and, and just observe the situation around us. Maybe if we could look at life through the lens of what, whatever camera that they use to, to film the, the, the Charlie Brown specials. Instead of just seeing Linus running around with a cloud over top of him, we would see ourselves running around with this little self-imposed cloud of doom and gloom as we go through life. We'd be able to look back and just see that happening. It's kind of funny in my mind, thinking about seeing us all running around with little clouds on it. It'd be really funny if it weren't so sad. Ingratitude, I think, is pervading our society. But this morning, we can't be resigned to that fact. For those of us that are followers of Jesus Christ, the growing negativity of our society should come to us, first of all, as a call to examine our own lives, as a call for some personal reflection. And then possibly beyond that, as a call to adjustment and action. We are called, as followers of Jesus, to be salt and light to our world. That is the mission that he has charged us with. As we come to know him, who he is and what he has done for us, then he engages us in a mission to the world around us, which is to be a positive influence on them. And so this morning, we need to understand that he is calling us to lead the charge out from under that cloud of gloom and doom, out from under that shadow of ingratitude. So to that end this morning, I want to look at three things for us to consider about thankfulness, which will hopefully then help us to evaluate, adjust, and take action in our own lives as necessary. So let's go. Number one, 
This morning, we need to understand that thankfulness to God is a distinctive. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you've got them, or your phones, tablets, whatever you've got with you. If you don't have something, there's a Bible in the pew in front of you, or else it'll be on the screen. We're going to go to Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 21. And there it says, Paul here writing, says this, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God, nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So as we come to this passage, we see here Paul painting for us a picture of the characteristics of the godless and wicked people. And a significant part of that picture is the fact that they do not give thanks to God. Now, that thought, that observation is backed up also in 2 Timothy chapter 3. That passage also points to the same thing, where it talks about in the end times. The wickedness of people will lead them to be ungrateful people. And so, I know what I think you're thinking right now. You're looking at me and saying, well, dude, they're not going to give thanks to God because they don't subscribe to God. So why is that a surprise? And you're right, it's not. But this morning, we can't stop there at that part of the observation. We have to push beyond that and draw some conclusions from that, which is to say that we need to understand that if ungratefulness, unthankfulness is a characteristic of the godless and the wicked, then for those of us that follow Christ, a characteristic of ours should be thankfulness and gratefulness to God. That's a a distinctive for us today in our lives. Are we thankful to God? (coughs) Or has the negativity and ungratefulness that we encounter so frequently in the world around us today, has that crowded in and started to infringe upon our thankfulness, pushing it out? So it starts with us today as we think about thankfulness. Can we look at our lives and can we say that we are distinctly thankful? That we are set apart from the rest of the world by our thankfulness to God. From there then we move on. When we are distinctly distinctly thankful to God, Then number two, our thankfulness should be formative to our perspective. Sorry, I got a little excited during my PowerPoint this this week. I want to go with a lot of the TIV words, distinctive, formative, perspective, things like that. Wait till the next one, it's awesome. (laughs) So all I'm saying here, point number two is, that thankfulness should shape our outlook on life. We find this regularly in Scripture. There are lots of instructions in Scripture for us to be thankful people. Let's take a look at some of them. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. Let's start there. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, it says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Straight up. God comes along and says, it's my will for you to be thankful. 
Ephesians 5, verse 20, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father. Colossians 3, verses 15 to 17. There it says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. One more. Philippians 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by, your prayer, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This morning, as followers of Christ, it's not good enough for us just to be thankful people in our heads and in our minds. God calls us to take our thankfulness and play it out day to day in our lives. He tells us to go into the circumstances of our lives, whatever they may be, good or bad, and view them through the lens of thankfulness. So that we can then have our thankfulness adjust our perspective on our circumstances, rather than having our circumstances dictate back to us about our faith in Christ. So often we get that backwards. We go into the circumstances of our lives, both good or bad, and we allow them to shape our perspective on God. And in so doing, on either side of that, that spectrum, we can get into trouble as we take the good things in our lives and start to build character, the character around, of God around that. Or as we go into the tough things of our lives, the junk that we encounter, that we have to navigate from week to week, day to day, and, and we allow that then to begin to shape our perspective of God and how we approach our lives. God says to us, don't do that. Establish from the outset to be thankful people and then do life accordingly. Now it's important to note because sometimes I think we tell that to ourselves, right? We tell that to our kids. You just be thankful because God says be thankful. And we don't give them the reason why. And there is a rationale. There is a point a foundation on which we can stand to be thankful people. And that's found, for, for example, in Psalm 107, verse 1, where it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Now there, there we begin to understand why we do life thankfully. Because number one, of who God is. He is good. And number two, because, his love, because of his love for us, which endures forever. Now, as we consider those points, remember this. God does not change. He is unchanging. Therefore, these characteristics of God transcend our circumstances. Again, our circumstances, good or bad, are going to come and they're going to go. They're going to ebb and flow through our lives. And so the mistake that we make is when we, again, use that as the lens to do life. God doesn't change. They do change. Therefore, we come and we understand and we interpret our circumstances through Him who doesn't change, not our circumstances that do. He is always good, and his love endures forever. And therefore, on account of that, we can face whatever we're facing in life. The good times, we understand to be because of him, him who is good. 
The challenging times we understand to be navigable, we understand to be acceptable as much as we don't like them because he is still good and his love endures forever. He is there to help nav us navigate through them. So therefore, our thankfulness has to be formative to our perspective in life. And we need to apply that to our lives today and walk according to that as a part of our faith. Thirdly, quickly, when we understand that thankfulness is a distinctive and it has to shape our perspective, we have to take one step further yet because it is an imperative that our thankfulness be indicative of our faith. I told you it would be good. <laughs> it's imperative that our thankfulness be indicative of our faith, which is to say that it is essential that our thankfulness be an indication of who we're thankful to, of our faith in Christ. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. We'll see here a story of the ten lepers. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. That was, that was something that they were to do in those times. The priest had to sign off on your state of health. Okay, so Christ tells them, Go to the priest. And so they head off. And as they went, they were healed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Another way of saying that is, your faith has healed you. Nine didn't do the math. I am sure that they were excited to be cured. But one of them stopped and did the math. Went beyond the fact of just examining and discovering that he had been healed. To actually then be able to attribute who he was healed by. That's, that's our requirement today as followers of Christ. It's not good enough for us just to be thankful. We need to be thankful to God and to let that be known and shown to the world around us. It has to be. Our thankfulness has to be an indication of our faith in God. Why does it have to be an indication of our faith in God? Well, secondly, it has to be an indication of our faith in God because our thankfulness is a fundamental part of our testimony to the world around us. When we live thankful lives and ascribe the credit for all that's good in our lives to God, we point people to Him. In the middle of an ungrateful unthankful world, as we live thankful lives, we will stand out like a sore thumb. As we point to things that are good in life, have those shape our perspective, and share those with the world around us, we will be singing a different tune. And mark my words, 
That will engage people with you. What's up with that? And so as we do it, then we earn an opportunity. God will come alongside and he will open somebody's eyes to the question of why. Why are you thankful? And at that point, we can share Christ with them. That's the second reason that our thankfulness should be indicative. The first reason, the number one reason why our thankfulness should be an indication of our faith in Christ is because He is worthy of our thankfulness. Romans 11 verse 36 says, for from Him and by Him and For him are all things. As followers of Christ, it is up to us to know and understand that we bring nothing to this party. That this is all about Christ. All about what he has done. Everything starts and stops with him. In and of ourselves, we deserve nothing. And it's it's just not about us. We deserve nothing. Nothing, that is, except death. Because the wages of our sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ. Christ. So God is worthy of our thanks because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in so doing, he took us from a life that is pointless and futile into a life that is full of hope and gratitude because it's completely different. 